In building your app, do you ever feel overwhelmed or disorganized? Like you could use an entire wall in your office or in your room to organize your ideas, your features, your designs, and, and everything involved in your app idea, right? In your development plan. If you answered yes to that, if you ever feel like you're disorganized or overwhelmed or cluttered, it means you need to simplify your development plan. You have to simplify your development plan. If you're new around here, my name is Kristen. I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, and we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. All right, so if you've ever felt that overwhelm, with your development or even with your planning before you get to development, it means that your plan is too complex, all right? And we see this a lot. We see uh, founders creating these really intense, in-depth, complex plans, and it, it really stalls their momentum, all right? So I wanna talk about what that looks like for you. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen, and we're gonna go into the whiteboard here. So. If you've ever felt this way, right? If you've ever felt overwhelmed, uh, like your plan or your ideas are just too cluttered, right? Um, right, so you felt the overwhelm of either development or just the planning aspects. Uh, if you felt disorganized, right? Uh, like you can't even find the starting point, whether it's with your app as a whole or even just a specific feature, uh, or if you felt uncertain, uncertain about which next step to take, uh, where to go next with your app, or just uncertain about everything you're doing, worried that, you know, you're not taking the next steps, right? Well, what that leads to is a struggle to ever really launch, right? And we unfortunately have seen this happen a lot with founders. You know, they feel the overwhelm, they feel disorganized, they feel uncertain, and they, they really struggle to ever launch their apps, even if it's just an initial version. They struggle to get to that point. Uh, and that's just because, like I said, it's too complex, right? So on the flip side, right, you really want to be reducing your guesswork right now, okay? That's what you want when you move into both your planning stages and your development stages. You wanna reduce the amount of guesswork as much as you possibly can because guesswork is what's gonna lead you astray and it's all gonna become kind of a tangled mess down the road, right? You wanna reduce that at the very start so that the next steps are clear and streamlined. Okay, you also want to reduce your decision making. All right, so when you have a complex plan, whether it's for your app or anything, and you've likely experienced this before, the more complexity involved uh, equates to the more decision-making involved, okay? And at a certain point, when you have too many decisions to make about your app or your development plan, it's going to start leading to decision fatigue. Right? Have you ever heard of analysis paralysis? Okay, that's what it is. It's decision fatigue. Over a certain amount of time, and that time isn't very long, if you have to make one decision after the next, after the next, and all of these decisions feel like, uh, you know, they're really going to change the entire path of your app or your business, it starts to wear on you. It gets harder to make these decisions, okay, and it leads back to that complexity we talked about and, and stalls or a struggle to launch your app. So you really just want to be able to reduce your decision making overall and simplify your development as a whole. Aside from all the strategy involved in creating and launching an app, you really want to be able to simplify your technical development, development tactics as well. And when you do these things, you are going to be much, much, much quicker to launch your app, 
to your initial users to get that in initial feedback that you need to move forward with. So when you move forward with the overwhelm, the, disorganized, the disorganization and the uncertainty that you might be feeling, right, you're gonna head down this path. You're gonna struggle to launch. Uh, you are going to, you're gonna find yourself with too much complexity. But when you can reduce your guesswork, reduce your decision-making, which is huge, and just simplify your development, even from a technical standpoint, you're going to be much, much, much quicker to launch your app and get the initial feedback you need. And that is, of course, what we want for you. So we have found that with most founders, uh, the number one reason they don't move forward as quickly as they otherwise could is because they're building too much too soon. Okay, this is really simple. And again, we're talking about simplifying, so it should be. It's really simple, but they just build too much too soon. Okay, so the complex, really advanced, uh, really customized features that you know really shouldn't come in until later stages in development, they don't fit into a well-planned MVP. An MVP is a minimum viable product. So it's the first version of your app that you're launching for feedback. Okay, so a lot of that doesn't fit into a well-planned MVP, and those are the things that lead to that overwhelm, disorganization, the uncertainty, the complexity, and ultimately the struggle to launch. So here's what you need to know. I'm going to uh, zoom out here. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Um, the scope of your app involves a few different things. Okay, so number one, it involves user types, okay? And you might not have thought of this in relation to scope before, but it involves user types because uh, this might not be the case for you, but a lot of apps are gonna have multiple user types, whether those are end users or admin, right? Uh, whatever it may be, they're going to have multiple user types and that's all part of your scope, okay? Uh, your features, obviously, make up your scope, all right? Uh, your problems that you are solving. So problem solved, right? Because your app is being created to solve a problem ultimately. So in reality, you might be solving one main problem. And if you haven't identified that, you should. Uh, if you, you might be solving one problem, but ultimately you're going to be solving lots of problems with your app. Right, you, you wanna solve one big problem at first, but as your app grows and expands, that's going to grow and expand to encompass multiple problems being solved, right? You are gonna build a solution that solves more than one problem. So that's all a part of your scope. Uh, and your target market, okay? So this is similar to user types, but a little bit different, right? Um, in the beginning, you're going to be solving, uh, you know, a problem for your specific target market. But just like, you know, your the problems you're solving will expand, your user types will expand, your features will expand. Well, your target market might be expanding too. You might start with a certain target market and expand it beyond that. So, in reality, all of these things make up your scope. Okay. So, let's just scroll down here a little bit. So, uh, the bigger the scope you start with, all right, the less momentum you're going to build in, be in the beginning with your development, with your te uh, technical development and strategic development, with a strategy around your development. So the bigger the scope you start out with, which the scope involves all the things we just talked about, the harder it is going to be for you to build momentum. So look at it this way. All right, so this can sort of resemble let me fix that. This can sort of resemble the scope, right, of your app with your MVP, right, your minimum viable product starting right down here. So your MVP down here, it includes uh, three specific components, which we're going to get to in just a minute, all right? But your MVP is that first version, your minimum viable product that uh, you are going to launch. It involves these three main components that we're going to talk about. Now, the rest of your scope 
right, moves out from there in phases, okay? So you can look at each one of these different rings as a different phase in your development, okay? And you'll move through those really for the, the entire lifetime of your app. You'll be moving through these different stages. Okay, now uh, your scope, right, what we talked about right up here, all of these things are going to evolve as you build throughout these phases. Okay, so, you know, in each phase, the number of problems you solve might expand, uh, your user types might expand, your features will expand, your target market will expand, but at the bottom down here, you have to start with that first version. You have to simplify, remember, so that you can launch quickly instead of struggling to even launch at all. So, okay, what do you do? What's next? And what are those three things that we, we mentioned talking about? All right, let's scroll down a little bit more here. Okay, so again, you have to simplify your MVP in order to move out in those other phases that we just went over. So this is what it's gonna look like for you. Okay, so there's three specific components that we wanna go over, all right? So your MVP, your minimum viable product, should involve one user type, okay, one problem being solved, and one core feature set, one core feature set. Okay, one user type, one problem solved, oops, Spelled that wrong. One problem solved and one core feature set. All right, here's how you can look at it because you might be thinking, okay, well, that's great, but how do I figure out, you know, which one user type to focus on for my MVP, which problem to focus on, which core feature set to focus on? Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about now. All right, so when you are trying to narrow down to your first user type that you are creating your MVP for, okay, uh, Think about it this way. If this person wasn't using your app, or if this person isn't on the app, the rest of it's gonna be irrelevant, okay? So this we call this your key user, just to get specific. So if you're having multiple user types on your app, think about which one is critical which one has to be on the app for the other type or types to even be relevant to the app or to even be able to use the app. In most cases, you're gonna be able to narrow down to your single user type by looking at it that way. Who must be on the app in order for anyone else to be able to even use the app, okay? That's gonna fit into your MVP. All right, one problem being solved, okay? Look at it in the exact same way. If this problem isn't solved, nothing else matters. Okay, so if it's not solved, right, nothing else matters. Spend some time thinking about this if you haven't already, okay? If this core problem isn't being solved, then not, none of the rest of the app matters. Nothing else matters, right? That's the one problem you need to solve with your MVP. If you're not solving that, the rest doesn't matter. So you have to solve that problem first. And then you move on to your core feature set. How do you decide this? Well, in reality, this involves a lot of strategy and a, 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 lot, of, a lot of different techniques and processes that you know, we're not gonna be able to get into in this one video, but to give you a general idea, think about it in the exact same way. If these features don't exist, uh, the first user type's problem will not be solved. Okay, so this one, right? First, you have to go back to the user type. If these features don't exist, the first user type's problem, okay, their first problem you're solving, right, will not be solved. So this core feature set has to solve the problem for your first user type. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna right here, look back to 
one and two. Okay, one steps one, two, and three. All right. That's how you can narrow down with these three specific components with your app to really help you simplify your development plan as a whole, all right, to reduce the complexity around that, but also to reduce the complexity around your technical development. Because by doing these things, by simplifying your plan, you're by default going to sim simplify your actual technical development, which is gonna help you move forward so much faster and help you avoid struggling to launch. Okay, so again, if you're feeling overwhelmed, right? If you're feeling cluttered, if you are feeling disorganized, if you are feeling like you wish you could just somehow take everything out of your brain and organize it in a way that just made sense for you, that could help you actually move forward, then you have to simplify your development plan. And these are the steps you need to go through in order to do that. These are the three main components that are gonna help you simplify so that you can actually not just struggle to launch at all, but launch quickly. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And listen, if you want help planning your different phases, uh, your MVP scope, and also help building that MVP so that you can move into your critical feedback stages quickly, we've blocked off some time for free strategy calls on our calendar where you can uh, just head to the link below or go to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash apply, schedule a time for a call, send over some details so we can see if we can help you. And then we'll talk about creating that development plan for you, simplifying it so that you can move forward quickly and whether or not we'd be a good fit to work together in doing so. So you can just head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash apply or click on the link right below to get that going. All right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, make sure you simplify if you're feeling any of these things and have a great rest of your day.